This is Design Safe Radio, where natural hazards researchers strive to make our society more resilient to everything nature throws at us. So what's next for you guys? Uh, after after the summer's over, you know, looking at uh, you know finishing up your senior year, um, where are you guys headed next? I think for me, uh, still considering my options, I'm definitely going to start applying to grad school towards the end of this year. So I mean, that's coming up pretty soon. So making a list of places I'm interested in, and a lot of that is based on some of the work that I'm seeing at the RU program. So that's definitely came at the right time to like consider my next steps. But yeah, so that's the plan, I guess. Yeah, I'm pretty much on the same page as well, where I definitely want to pursue graduate school, but I don't really know where I'm going to go yet or um, exactly what I'm going to do. But um, throughout the summer, even being able to talk with like other RU students about like what they plan on doing and where they might want to go has been really useful. And like I've been getting a lot of advice on like what I should do. And so just trying to figure all that out, I guess. Yep. And uh, I guess I'll third wheel that too. Um, same thing. So going into grad school, I'm more looking at uh, direct admit PhD programs if I can. <laughs> Um, from undergrad and uh, like Will said it, it'll probably be probably be right after the summer that the applications open up and I'll have to start. That's great. Any, any of you guys planning on going to the AGU fall meeting in, in December down in New Orleans? I had not planned on it no. Ooh it, that would be a good I mean, if you could swing it or you can get some funding to go. Um, I mean if you, if you haven't heard of this the American Geophysical Union um, and obviously last year it was virtual because everything was, but they're doing it in person again this year, which is going to be amazing. Um, and we have a booth uh, as Nary. And it's at least two years ago in 2019, it'll probably be different now, but there was 25,000 people there from all sorts of different um, physical and earth sciences. So geotech, okay. geophysicists, coastal engineers, uh, meteorologists, oceanographers, just all over the place. Um, and would be a really great networking opportunity for, for any of you guys or any of your uh, peers listening. And they also have a huge poster session. I mean, an entire like big presentation hall, ex exhibition hall, uh, so you can get some good ideas of, uh, you know, maybe future research uh, opportunities or, or PIs to collaborate with as you go through your, your graduate career. So highly encourage you guys to check it out. And I imagine New Orleans in December ought to be pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is is there um, maybe some some way that either from from the Nary side or just kind of academic life in general that could support you as student researchers even better? Like, what's something? Man, I wish we could do this. I wish uh, personally that does give me an idea. Like, uh, based on a personal experience, um, so I'm in a dual degree program at OSU. So there are a lot of credits to complete in four years. Um, so a lot of yeah, classes yeah. that I have to fit in uh, each semester. And, uh, you know, I didn't know I wanted to go into research when I came into school, kind of like Claire, I started out as a business major and then moved into engineering. Um, so I, I was kind of late to the party in that way. So after my second year is when I kind of got involved in research and geotech and all that good stuff. So if I had to make a change, I wish that universities in general would allow for more like a transfer of credits to like just pure research. Like if I could take away some of my classes and replace that with research, um, that would be very useful for someone like me who wants to go into mm. you know, a PhD program. I know they do that even at OSU uh, where I go, they do it, but I think they, they cap that at between one and three hours of credits. Um, and I do a lot more than that when I'm, uh, during the semester at school, but you, I have to balance, you know, these really hard classes, um, junior and senior year, uh, with that research. So if there was a way to kind of, um, mediate that and make it, you know, more balanced, I feel like that would be a good, good mm -hmm. thing that could help student researchers. That's a, that's a really good observation. I, I, I don't know if you've heard of, uh, Matthew McConaughey's new book, Green Lights, and anybody read it yet? I've heard about it. Yeah. He was, he was talking about the same thing in film school of like, I'm taking all these classes that really don't actually get me what I need to be marketable in, in the film world. Can you just give me C's if I show up for the exams so that, <laughs> you know, I can go out there and actually get acting jobs and not saying that that's what you're asking for, but kind of 
it would be the, if there's an equivalent of, Hey, I want to do more research. And if I'm doing really good in research and can at least, you know, show up for the exams, quote unquote, um, you know, you'd be set up better for a, a research career. Yeah, definitely. And it seems like it worked out for him. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think uh, there should be more work done in promoting fresh or like introducing freshmen to undergraduate research. Like, mm. I, I think at least in my experience, I didn't really know much of my options till towards the end of my sophomore year, junior year. And also I had the benefit of my brother doing undergraduate research in mechanical engineering, but at least I knew the process of like reaching out to professors and that kind of thing. But I didn't feel like for, for someone coming that does not know anything, I don't really know how, how easily they could get into this sort mm. of thing. So how, how could we do that? Because I had a very similar experience. I had no idea of the opportunities when I was going through undergrad and didn't take advantage of any of them. Um, so how, how would you communicate that to a freshman who's overwhelmed with just getting into school and trying to survive? Uh, how do you get through with something that they would care about? I think uh, how all undergraduates have an introductory course to their major, like an introduction to civil engineering or those kind of things. I think those classes yeah. would be more beneficial. They're a lot smaller and a lot more focused on uh, like vague topics and more focused on your opportunities during the next four years of what you could actually learn here instead of just what you might end up doing in the future. I think that would be helpful. Mm, that's really good. I would say also to like students, like freshmen going in and trying to like get involved in different things is to get involved in like clubs that have to do with your major. Um, we have a club, it's called Wise Women in Science and Engineering. Um, and they have just provided me with a lot of insight on like just internships and how to get involved in research and like what to do as like a minority in STEM and stuff like that. And I think that's kind of really important because then you know a lot about what major you're going into um, and like the field you're going into and how to take advantage of that. So I think like looking into like clubs that have to do with your major is really helpful as well. Mm, that's a really good point. You know, you know, especially for women engineers out there, you got SWE, Society of Women Engineers and all sorts of clubs like that that are, like you said, really helpful in that networking and, you know, helping you make the most of those opportunities. That's great. Awesome. Um, yeah, I just really appreciate you guys taking the time out of, I, I know you've got a ton going on this summer and still needed some time to rest at least once a little bit. You know, I know you're young, but you still need sleep eventually. Um, so <laughs> I appreciate you guys taking the time and looking forward to seeing what comes out of your, uh, you know, illustrious research careers ahead of you. And uh, hopefully we'll see you again when you're graduated with your PhDs and getting your postdocs and, and working at one of the NERI sites. So it's going to be released. Really Really amazing to see the, the future ahead of you guys. So really excited for, for all of you and feel free to keep in touch, of course, uh, as things go along and, uh, you know, any way that any of anybody in the network can help you, as you know, and I've been talking with, uh, about so far as we're, we're very supportive bunch. <laughs> Definitely. Thanks Thank for having us, Dan. So much. Yeah. yeah it was great. You. Thanks for listening to today's episode of Design Safe Radio. This show is sponsored by the National Science Foundation grant number 1612144. You can subscribe to Design Safe Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you find your podcasts. Please leave us a review so we can improve the show. Please also help others find our episodes in iTunes. Thanks for your feedback and support. You can find out more about NARI at designsafe-ci.org, on Facebook at Design Safe Radio, or on Twitter at NARI Design Safe. <laughs>